For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so in the last video we talked about how we made the ketone bodies. We made D-beta-hydroxybutyrate. But what happens to the ketone bodies once they get to the extrahepatic tissues? That's basically what this whole video is about. Okay, So we've got the D-beta-hydroxybutyrate that we made um, in the liver mitochondria. And now it's in the extrahepatic tissues, specifically in the mitochondrial matrix of them. Okay, So we're going to take the D-beta-hydroxybutyrate that we made and we're going to turn it back into acetoacetate, which is the other ketone body. Okay, And... In this process, we're going to take uh, this basically this OH group and turn it into um, a carbonyl, and that is specifically going to be an oxidation reaction. It's going to be an oxidation, and if that's if that D beta hydroxybutyrate is being oxidized, then something has to be reduced, and in this case, it's NAD plus being reduced to NADH. You'll notice this is the reverse reaction that we saw. This is the reverse of the last reaction that we saw in the previous video. And it was catalyzed by D-beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase. Okay. So this is catalyzing the same, the same reaction, just the reverse of it. Okay. So we get the acetoacetate. Okay. And previously it was a reduction, right? But now we're moving towards, uh, we're going in the opposite direction, so it's an oxidation. So now we have acetoacetate. What's going to happen to this acetoacetate? We're going to turn it into acetoacetyl-CoA. And in order to do that, we're going to need to add a coenzyme A. We're going, to need, we're going to need to add this coenzyme A here. Okay, And so that's coming from not an acetyl-CoA, actually a succinyl-CoA, which is a TCA cycle intermediate. And so basically it's going to give up its coenzyme A to acetoacetate. And what's going to be left over is just the rest of the molecule, which is going to be succinate. Again, another TCA cycle intermediate. So here we're basically um, just taking the acetoacetate and adding a coenzyme A onto it. And this is not this, this is not the reverse of something that we saw in um, the actual ketone body synthesis. This process is catalyzed by beta-ketoacyl-CoA transferase, also known as thiophorase. I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm not sure. If there's another way to pronounce it, definitely let me know. Okay. So what's happening here is we're getting this acetoacetyl-CoA. And um, we're going to call that the activation of acetoacetate, right? Adding on that coenzyme A. Okay. Now what? We're going to take that acetyl, acetyl-CoA and basically cut it back up into two acetyl-CoAs that we have here. Okay. And so in order to do that, we're going to need a coenzyme A. And that's exactly what we're going to add here in this reaction. We're just going to add a coenzyme A. And we're going to cleave the acetoacetyl-CoA into two acetyl-CoAs that we have here. And so that is a cleavage reaction. And if you had to guess, what do you think that this would be catalyzed by? If you took a guess and guessed thiolase, you'd be right. All right this is a reaction that we've seen quite a bit now at this point. Okay. So now in these extra hepatic tissues, we basically just made these two acetyl-CoAs. So I have the question down here, where is this happening? It's specifically happening in the mitochondrial matrix of the extrahepatic tissues, okay? Not liver cells, right? Why not liver cells? Well, because the liver makes the ketone bodies for other tissues, right? But also specifically because the liver does not have beta ketoacyl CoA transferase or thiophorase. This enzyme up here this enzyme does not show up in ketone body synthesis. Right? This is not in ketone body synthesis. It's only in um in the, in the pathway of using the ketone bodies as um, a source of energy, right? Breaking them, breaking the ketone body down, basically back into two acetyl-CoAs. This enzyme is necessary in order to do that. And this doesn't, is not in liver cells, right? So liver cells can't use ketone bodies for energy. 
but other cells that have that enzyme can. Okay. And also just, just thinking about it, why would the liver make the ketone bodies and then just break them right back down, back down into acetyl-CoA? That would just make no sense, right? Um, but anyway, what, what happens to these acetyl-CoAs? These acetyl-CoAs, now that they're in the mitochondrial matrix of these extra hepatic tissues, they can go to the TCA cycle, and of course, they will give, um, they will give NADHs, FADH2s, and GTPs, right? Energy for the cell. This is all energy for those cells. Okay. So what's ultimately happening with all this? Well, basically, what happened is that the liver is sending acetyl CoA, right? by way of ketone bodies that it's that it's not metabolizing it's sending them to other tissues that will use them right so we basically took acetyl coas that were in the liver converted them to ketone bodies just so that they could travel in the blood to get to these extra hepatic tissues and then we took that ketone body that we started with up here right which came from the liver and we just converted it back into acetyl coas except now these acetyl coas are no longer in the liver right they're in these other tissues that are going to break them down uh, for energy. Okay. Now there's a the question though: What if those tissues do not use them? What what happens then? Well, that's something that we'll see in the next video. I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.